special guest for you. This person is an award-winning fashion designer and also an actor. He has been starred in so many movies in Ghana here. I don't know if outside Ghana also. Yeah. And he represented Ghana in Big Brother Africa The Chase in 2013. He is the person of Elikom, Elikem Komoji. Welcome, boss. Thank you very much. <laughs> I almost missed your name, you know. No, it's okay. Okay. All right. Thanks for granting us this time to come and have an um, interaction. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. Um, so um so many people are confused, like the name, your brand name, Alikem the Taylor. You know, most fashion designers don't want to be called the Taylor and seamstress but then um we are quite surprised you are using you are comfortably using the name the tailor so why did you actually add tailor to your name to make it a brand name so um i'm i'm actually a tailor in question i i i do the practicality of the work um i cut i stitch i finish a garment so you can call me a designer who is more practical with the work and I like to call myself the tailor because I like to believe that um, I love the practical part of the job, which is tailoring, which is being the machinist, than being the one who just does the creative directing or creative designing. So you actually design yourself and you also do the tailoring? Yes, yes, yes. I'm the creative director. Um, every design you see that, that is associated with um, Elikim the tailor is actually exclusive to the tailor. It's something I designed personally. So we've been seeing you in many movies as well. So how do you combine your job with um, the acting? I actually went to, to school to do uh, theater arts. So I, I did the whole movie, drama, stage thing in the University of Ghana. And um, fashion or tailoring just came along the way as talent. So I'm an actor first and then the fashion came along, but I'm, I find myself lately choosing more fashion over acting because um, um, it, takes, it takes a lot to do both. Um, and they were like babies I gave birth to at the same time. So I'm not able to let one go and do the other. But um, lately, there's a lot of mediocrity in the movie industry. So I like to find myself doing um, what I can have full control over, which is my fashion side of things. Um, more than the acting because I'm not able to produce a full movie by myself executive produce a full movie by myself so I'd rather executive produce my clothing line um, if you understand what I mean the movie production entails a whole lot more than the fashion industry so how is it like starting a brand and how does it feel like for me it was easy because I loved what I was doing from day one. It didn't seem like a lot of work. It didn't seem like hustle. There was not a lot of money in it. I wake up, I go to Makola, I find fabric. I come, I give it to tailors around the place. I bought my first machine where I used to start with doing alterations at my father's house. And then it grew into a big business. So um, it hasn't been an easy road, I must admit. But it's, it's been quite, quite a sale. When, like a sale, when I say sale, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's been, yeah, it's, it's been quite, not too easy, but at the same time easy because it's, it's, um, it's more to do with, with the passion of it. So have you always had the natural talent of designing? Now that I think of it, a, a, a schoolmate of mine came to sit here the last time, a classmate of mine from Ingobert, um, Fifi Coleman. No, not Coleman. Fifi Coleman is an actor. I, I didn't go to school with Fifi Coleman. Fifi Corte. Now, Fifi Corte is, is, is a friend of mine who's an architect now, and he's telling me that back then when we were in JSS, he used to remember I'd like cut some King Tay and put it on some part of my shoes and some part of my shirt and pants, and I was always good with the buttons, and I used to hold up the sleeve of my shirt so it doesn't look too big. So I guess it's always been in me somewhere uh, in there. So I'll advise parents that when you when you find a spark or a flash of something in your in your child, something he loves to do from childhood, nurture him. Because if I was nurtured back then, and, and you know, I, was, I actually went to tertiary to do fashion, I would have been a whole lot better. Um, but you, you, you learn alongside, and, and, 
everything that happens happens well and good. So it's it's all appreciated. But um, yeah. I, so I, I think it's 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 always been there. You just don't actually realize. And around the time, tailors and fashion designers were not as much as now and not so respected. So you'd be like, ah, So, um, you know, running around the place, trying to get our PlayStations on, and all you know is doctor, lawyer, pharmacist, you know, architect, you know, you don't think of tailoring, but here we are doing what we love and, and making money from it. And I guess you really had some challenges between your parents and yourself. Be deciding to be a tailor? No, 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 not, not at all. Not a, not an inch close in to... In support, like 100%? 172% in support. My mom actually also did a lot with fashion. She was also a fashion designer. She trained a whole lot of people in Nigeria, in North Do Nigeria. we know her? Her name is Victoria. You might know her. She, she's, she's, she's not exactly you know people who buy food from her jolie would know she's she's a food vendor um caterer um so yeah she she trained a whole lot of people in fashion when she was in northern nigeria she where she had my older brother and sister uh, and so she always says how i picked it up from her my grandfather used to be a a, a machine mechanic a, a a sewing machine mechanic so he used to fix machines and all that, um, sewing machines. So I guess the tailoring and sewing and fashion and the whole works has been in the blood and the system <laughs> for a very long time. And, but it's, it's just me amongst all my siblings. And I think um, nuclear family, not in nuclear, a little bit of extended who's doing fashion. To this so um, what's the difference between a fashion designer and a tailor? Because, you know, most people think like sewing, it's all this industry is about. Um, a tailor can be a fashion designer and vice versa. But if you want to separate someone who's strictly a fashion designer, a fashion designer may not exactly be an expert machinist. So someone who's an expert machinist knows how to control 100% the machine and get your straight lines. Okay, then we have a cutter. A fashion designer could be a cutter at the same time but he could not be a machinist. So a machinist is a special and different field all by itself. You, to be a machinist, you need years and years of experience. I'll give you five and over years, ex years of experience to be an expert machinist. And you might not exactly be a fashion designer. So a fashion designer is someone who's got the creative genes and who's able to come up with a design and the pattern for the design and ultimately be able to cut it and direct the machinist to achieve the design. So you find your fashion designer being an illustrator, sometimes a cutter and a creative person. But your tailor is usually the person who is an expert machinist who sit behind the machine, who knows how to stitch. Usually they're cutters as well. So it's just the categories. Down here in Ghana, you we find a lot of people calling themselves fashion designer and they do the sketching and the sketching is not even close to 50% of what a sketching a sketch should be. And you find your fashion design, same fashion designers here cutting. You find them, uh, the same people sewing behind the machine. You find they're the same people taking pictures of their clothes. But fashion designing in general is broad category where you have your fashion photographers, you have your fashion bloggers, you have your models. You have your machines, you have your cutters, you have your illustrators. So it's like being a jack, jack of all traders, as cliche as it may sound, you will be an achiever of none. But specializing in a field makes you a master. So do you have models, your personal models that um, you use during fashion shows? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a few um, top models in the industry that I work with, a few uh, you know, up and coming as well. Shout outs to Lord. Um, Lord is, is a top model that used to work with Exotic, used to work with Exopa. Then I've got IB, Prince IB, Ibrahim. Um, we, so every time we meet at a runway show and, and they're on the bill, they work for me. They walk for me, sorry. If um, they're not even on the bill, we're able to get them to walk for me because they've, they've kind of advanced to the stage where they've got um, model modeling agencies now where they outsource and, and get other models to do the photo shoots and runways and they train models as well. Um, I work with Zion sometimes. I work with some of the ladies I've worked with. Um, Victoria, 
once, um, I think, Victoria. Have I worked with Victoria Michaels? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not remembering. But um, some other up-and-coming ones. Um, there's the Emmerine. There's the Jay Joms. There's the... And is it difficult working with them? Not entirely. Um, a good model knows what to do. You don't say much. Um, and I guess it's levels with levels. <clears throat> Even if you want to do a photo shoot where you want to go low budget and you don't want to use professional models or you don't want to use models that are too out there because of costs, um, you'd want to do an audition and find models with a little bit of experience or have them do something small for you to check and see if they're people you can work with ultimately. So it's it's you and your choices. I mean, if you go and just want to go and pick anyone from the street who's not a model or has no experience, of course you're going to have to do a lot to groom them or tell them what you want for them to give you what you want. So I haven't personally faced too many challenges with models. I mean, challenges are, are obvious. They're along the road to success. So um, you get to a fashion show and, and, and the... the the authorities of the show have chosen models that are not too experienced, and th then you could have a problem. But otherwise, I haven't necessarily encountered problems with any. So all the time, they rock your designs on the runway very well for you. Or ha has there been any situation whereby you see a model not doing what you expect? Yeah, a few. There was one fashion show I went to in Nigeria, and some of the models didn't bring out their A game. Even here in Ghana, there's one or two shows I've been on, and the models didn't do as you expect. Or you do a choreography and you say, let's walk this way for the finale. Let's turn around like this. Let's somersault. And people go do half of what you've asked them to do. So how do you feel in such a situation? No, no, no. Um, of course, you things haven't gone according to plan. But you suck it up and make it work, you know? So um, it's, it's like, it's like sh being on stage, like a stage. I mean, fashion shows are like drama. Yeah. So if it goes wrong, you just continue and act like nothing's happened. And, and make it work. So since you had the brand name Elikem the Taylor, who wore your design first? Myself. Yourself. Okay, apart from yourself. <laughs> have you have um have you been designing for celebrities? Yes, yes, yes. A few celebrities. Are we supposed to mention names? Sure. Really? <laughs> <laughs> um let me start from Amakea Barbase. She was one of the first few celebrities who wore my clothes when we were not even known when her name wasn't half out there. So shout outs to Amakea. Actually, I was thinking you only design for men. No, 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 no. I actually design for women as well. When you look around, okay. there's a few women yeah. outfits. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're yet to stock the place. So since we opened two weeks ago, we've sold about half of our stuff already and we're restocking. So come next week, you see more. I'm a cab member. Say I did John Dumelo's engagement. Um, we've done Stone Boy. We, we dressed Stone Boy twice. Ghana Music Awards. Um, Majid Michelle. Um, Stone Boy a lot actually. Awards he's won outside. Um, Chris Atoll. Um, talk about um, why am I not remembering? There's a few. You've got your Peter Ricci. You've got your. Um, yeah, just to you. Mention. You made mention of VGMA, right? right. And it's um, the two, 2019 is approaching very soon. Are you going to dress any celebrity? I haven't spoken to anyone or heard from anyone yet, but I think I'd like to pick maybe two male, one female, and see what I can do with them. Um, I've I've been away for a little bit. I was in Dubai for about six months, and I just came back. So I'm trying to get back into the hang of things because, um, fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> Things went on well there. Things didn't go on well here too much. So I'm here to regroup. Um, I had a few hitches at the production side, the workshop, which we've been able to fix and put back on track. So we're 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 getting back into the hang of things. Uh, this shop opening also took a bit of uh, my time away from everything else. So I think I'll make a few phone calls for the VGMA. See what comes out. So um, when you dress these uh, celebrities, and like, can you dress anybody for an, a special occasion? What's the deal? Do they have to pay you or do they do it for free just for advertisement and all that? Um, it depends on, on what you want to have with, on, on what kind of agreement you have with them. Some celebrities come and they pay outright. Sometimes you as a designer call the celebrities to say, Charlie, 
uh, Ghana Music Awards, they come up. What are you wearing? Let me dress you up. And so that I can use your name and face to get a bit of um, um, mileage. Or you can mention me. It's it, it, it goes either way. So celebrities can just walk in and buy clothes. Or they can call you and say, oh, I have an event. Um, what, what are you going to do? for me or what do you want us what can we do together so it becomes some sort of a collaboration where you dress them and then you use their images or pictures or you get them to mention you which which could give you mileage so we've seen um, a lot of um, fashion shows in ghana where we've been seeing your design on have you had any fashion show outside ghana I had a fashion show in Namibia, I got a fashion show in, in South Africa, done with um, Nigeria, to mention a few. Just so all this country that you just mentioned, do you have your clothing line there, like a shop that when we go there, when somebody goes there, the person can actually get your clothing line? No, I ship worldwide, but I only have a, a department in Dubai at a place called City Walk, Lay BHV. Um, so only in dubai nowhere else so far so what's the future for Eli the brand elikem the tailor um you know we're trying to go above and beyond the skies we're trying to be the zara of africa um i'm i'm only recently going into retail clothing i want you know i want to have outlets across the world where people can just walk in and, and shop african inspired clothes and that's the dream and we're working towards it so this is like a tip of the iceberg that broke down the Titanic ship. We're, 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 we're working towards it. So, um, we have a lot of people, a lot of young people who want to be a fashion designer like yourself. And a lot of people don't know how to start. You understand? And people are thinking maybe you had the money already. Then you just start everything, yeah. So I want you to tell them something, how you started and how they should go about things in order to be like you. So my story is a freaking long one. I'll cut it short. I'll make it a 30 minute story. That's long. Don't say sure. <laughs> like two minutes. So I was, supposed to, I was supposed to finish the University of Ghana. I deferred a year's course because I, I didn't have the money to finish. I came out not knowing what to do. Even before that, I just had the love for talent, for passion. So for fashion, sorry. The first thing you need to do is know that you really love and want to do it. Don't just want to do fashion because Elikem is doing fashion and you think he's making him some money and he's looking good in pictures and, and I want to be famous as well. So No, that will take you down the drain. You do fashion because you have a little bit of talent, something you can do naturally and not feel remorseful for. There are people who are actors who are making a lot of money. There are people who are doctors who are passionate about being doctors who are making a lot of money. There are people who even carry bola. Somebody like Zoom Lion, for example, they take bola, but they but they, they make the money. They, they pick up the fashion style. You know what I'm saying? So not everyone is supposed to be a fashion designer. So first point, you have passion for it. Secondly, when I started, it was nothing. I used to go and buy clothes from Cantamanto and change the buttons and just put paint in it and say Ellie Kim the Tailor. And I wasn't always called Ellie Kim the Tailor. It was Ellie Kim's Tailoring. So one day I was sitting in my girlfriend's house and her friend came over and she's like, so what's your brand name? I said Ellie Kim's Tailoring. She's like, no, that's boring. Why don't you make it something like Ellie Kim the Tailor? So shout out to Mary from Gimpa at the time. So that's how the name came about. So it's step by step. And then it got to the point where I'll now buy fabric and take it to people around Jowlu. Some of them were in containers. Some of them were in wooden kiosk. Uh, shout outs to Stephen Agosu, <laughs> Agosu, who, who um, was at Jowlu. He's, he's still at Jowlu, um, somewhere like after the Adam's Chicken Corner. But Stephen is one of the first few people who, you know, held me down and used to make clothes for me to take to my clients. And then I bought my first machine and I literally turned my father's porch onto sewing grounds. I put a big table that my mom used to cut her bread on. And that's what I used to cut on. And I had a small iron that we used to, iron that my, the house used to iron their clothes with was the iron I started with making clothes with. And before I bought my, even my own iron. My first machine, machines cost 1,200 CDs now. My first machine was a, just a machine head that cost me 
150 Ghana CDs at the time. And I had to connect a certain foot to it and connect a certain table and, and cut out a table for it to work. So it didn't start all glamorous. And by the time I was employing my first person, first tailor to work with, I was scared. I didn't know how I was going to pay him because I didn't have that, that much work. And I used to take pictures with my cell phone and edit it and go on YouTube and look for how to edit and try and put it on Facebook to get work. And that's how it started. Now I've got a I've got well up to 10 people working for me. I've got almost 20 machines. I've got this big store where I put clothes now for retail. Like it's a whole process. It's a process that you need to relax and go through. It took me six to seven years to get here and I'm nowhere compared to where I want to get. So it's, it's, it's always a gradual process. You need to take your time. So do you sometimes get worried because there are a lot of fashion designers in town? There's a whole lot of fashion designers and there's a whole lot of mediocrity as well. So no, I'm not worried. And I, I love my, comp my competition because it's healthy. So shout outs to man like Kweku Bedia Kung Chocolate. Shout outs to man like um, Abrantia the Gentleman. And uh, recently I discovered a, a guy called Big Lomo and there's Fifi Yebwa. And, uh, and there's all these top guys doing clean work. They, they make fashion from Ghana look edible. They make it look presentable. And that's what I love. I love, I love the fact that I get out of Ghana and we're able to compete with the rest of the world in terms of finishing and cleanliness and fabric and quality and, and color. Because, um, you know, Ghana is only known out there for soccer. Yeah. But now when you, when you mention Ghana, they know us for Kente. Sure. And the beautiful things we're doing with Kente is, is, is impeccable. So you have people like Pistis doing awesomely well with with King Tay. And recently I went back on their page and they've got over a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. People like she by Bina are doing crazy. I met Sheila one time in, in Dubai buying lace. So you see, we, we take the job to heart. We go out there, we outsource the fabric, we bring it back, we work with it and the quality follows us. But there's also a lot of mediocrity. I'm not going to mention the people doing the mediocrity because if you ain't going to say nothing nice, don't say it at all. So there's also a lot of mediocrity with um, people calling themselves fashion designers and they don't know half a thing about fashion. It, it, it's actually some way. Okay, so you were, you were in Big Brother 2013, the chase, right? What actually drive you to go for that? So at, at first, you know, the love for acting was there more than the love for fashion because fashion had only started and it was just talent. I, I, I went to school to, to do drama and acting ultimately. I went to school because of acting. So um, Big Brother Africa was another platform to propel and project myself to the rest of the world to say, hey, I'm this goofy, crazy, obnoxious, unnecessary, idiotic guy from Ghana who you can call to actual movies. This is me and this, these are my diverse ways. But I even found myself advertising more tailoring in the house than, than acting because I wore my tape measure on my neck every day. I want another outfit of mine. That thing, um, what actually inspired you to put a... I actually don't have a tape measure on right now and I'm, I'm itching like... I'm even surprised. And you're too saying. Me hooky cam. I can say. Omwada. Omwada. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, I am. Um, I wear the tape measure every day because it's, it's almost like a walk-in advertisement for me. Number one, number two is to tell the rest of the world what I do and how proud I am of it. Um, people see me, they see a tape. Ah, you're a tailor. Yeah, did you make that? Yeah, can you make me one? I just throw a card to them. And plus, you got to be known for something, or you you'll just sit for nothing. So um, it's also more like a trademark thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Carl Lagerfeld was known for wearing dark sunglasses <laughs> all the time. And that was funny because when they were describing him, they said that the German designer who's known for wearing dark shades even at night. So you got to be known for something. You got to be pinned to something. Right. I actually watched the Big Brother, The Chase. That, I've not been watching it, but that year I watched it from beginning to end. And I was like, ah, who is this guy wearing tape all the time? It, it I was surprised. You, wanna, you made you want to know who it was, didn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. So, so some people shy away from fame and, and, and all that. And some people are not able to be as obnoxious, obnoxious or um, loud or out there as, as much. But some of us, you know, don't mind the hype. Because uh, at the end of the day, it um, doesn't matter what you do or how good you do it. 
you're still gonna have haters you're still gonna have any because at the end of the day you know it doesn't matter what um if nobody talks about you then you're nobody so what makes you happy is ultimately what you need to do people see you walking just walking and they hate on you for no reason um so talk about me if you may and i'm living my life i'm happy i'm that that's what i want to do wear my tape around my neck because that's what i love doing so yeah it's 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 It's, it's kind of uniqueness because i've not seen any fashion designer wearing the tape the tape a a few a few people now are you know taking on the trend but also um um people also do it um for just the sake of the hype maybe but a a few people are doing it now a few people are doing it now okay so it's been amazing time with you right now and um i've learned a lot you know i didn't actually know that we have tailors and we have fashion designers and they are separate people and all that so thanks for having us thanks so much thank you for having me i was replying some message Model TV Ghana. Model TV Ghana. Model TV. Model TV Ghana. Model TV. Model TV. TV. Keep watching Model TV Ghana. Model TV Ghana. Keep watching.